Uh, my name is Daniel Hilty. I have uh, the joy of getting to be one of the, the pastors here, along with Pastor Adrian and, and Pastor Jim. And, and uh, I just want to uh, add my welcome to all of you here this morning. We are so grateful to God uh, for each of you. I want to say especially how grateful to God we are for our guests. If you are a guest here this morning, I know we have some wonderful guests from Illinois. Welcome. And uh, if you are a guest for any other reason, uh, welcome. Our prayer is that you have a sense this hour somehow of God's love for you, Jesus' love for you, our love for you. We want you to know you are always welcome at Campbell United Methodist Church. And uh, we hope to see you back here again, even our folks from Illinois. It'd be great to see you back here again sometime. So I have the joy of being able to share in the uh, sermon time today, in the message time, and to begin with some scripture reading. Uh, Throughout this morning, as you have heard already from Pastor Adrian, we are thinking about uh, the mystery and the majesty and the mission of God. Right? And, and how, how oftentimes saying yes to God's mission also means uh, stepping out in faith a little bit and, and saying yes to, to what is a little bit unknown. The path is a little bit unclear. And yet, that's where God leads us, and that's where God calls us. And, and that's what we find in our scripture reading today. We find the very final step of a journey into a future that is a little unknown, that the people of God, the Israelites, have been taken for many years. And then finally, they arrive in the promised land under the, the guidance of a new leader, a guy named Joshua. And that's where our scripture reading picks up today. From Joshua chapter 3, verses 7 through 13, let us listen for the, the mystery and the majesty, the mission of God, and in particular, how that, that majesty and mystery becomes real in the lives of the people. The Lord said to Joshua, this day I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all Israel so that they may know that I will be with you as I was with Moses, the previous leader. You are the one who shall command the priests who bear the Ark of the Covenant. When you come to the edge of the waters of the Jordan, you shall stand in the Jordan River. Joshua then said to the Israelites, draw near and hear the words of the Lord your God. Joshua said, by this you shall know that among you is the living God who without fail will drive out from before you the Canaanites, Hittites, Hivites, Perizzites, Girgashites, Amorites, and Jebusites. The ark of the covenant of the Lord is going to pass before you into the Jordan. So now, Joshua said, select 12 men from the tribes of Israel, one from each tribe. When the soles of the feet of the priests who bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, rest in the waters of the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan flowing from above shall be cut off. They shall stand in a single heap. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you join with me in a moment of prayer, please? Oh God, we give you thanks for these moments together and for your word among us through scripture above all, through, through music, through prayers, through your gift of fellowship in one another. Help us to encounter your living word, Jesus Christ, this hour. Draw us closer to you and be pleased in all that we sing and speak and think and do. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. So who here this morning was in attendance last Wednesday night for the start of our Campbell at the Movies series? Who, who is here? Good, thank you. Thank you. We've got, we've got several. Thank you for coming. Uh, thank you for being here this morning, too. Uh, for those of you who are not aware of it, last Wednesday night, we began our Campbell at the Movie series. The idea is every Wednesday, we start with dinner at 5 o'clock. We watch a movie after that, and we talk about the movie then the following Sunday. And so we began that this past Wednesday. A few months ago, when the worship team here learned that my family and I were going to be coming to Campbell, they very graciously sent us an invitation. They said, what are some of your favorite movies? We'd like to make the movie series about uh, some of your favorite films. And so there are, are four of us uh, in our family. There are four weeks in the series, so each person in the Hilties picked one, right? One film for one week in, in the series. And then really the worship team ran with that. They made... Uh, 
the, the decorations, the, the design, they found the clips. Uh, in fact, I want to I say a word of thanks to our worship team. They work really hard behind the scenes. Uh, they, it includes Pastor Adrian and uh, Bill Huff, our music director, and uh, Kendra Pickett, our media director as well. Can we give thanks to God for them? We are grateful for them. For those of you who are not familiar with Kendra, uh, she is our, our media director. She sits up on high, right? And, and she watches the goings on of all of us mortals down here, right? And, uh, and she does very important things, like reminds us preachers when we forget to turn on our microphones or when we're preaching too long or, or whatever. She keeps us going. She's also looking for help. And so, if you would like to assist in the media uh, ministries here at Campbell United Methodist Church, if you would like to be able to sit in the balcony during worship, which everyone knows is the coolest part of the sanctuary anyway, if you would like to play with the computer, if you like to, to move uh, bars around on the soundboard and never know exactly how that works, if you like to push buttons, if you like the thought of being able to mute a preacher during the sermon... <laughs> Please talk with Kendra or talk with Bill and they will be happy to get you connected. So um, I, I hope you don't do that last thing, but that's okay if you do. We're just, we still want help. Um, so this past week, we started a Campbell the Movies with our first movie and it was called Howl's Moving Castle. Howl's Moving Castle. Have anyone seen Howl's Moving Castle either there or some other time? Yeah, yeah, good, great. Thank you, thank you. Um, you know, the response I heard most often after Wednesday night from folks watching Howl's Moving, Moving Castle was... That was an interesting movie, right? That was, that was a different kind of movie. That was an unusual movie, a mysterious movie. And it is. It's all of that. It, it, it's a Japanese film. It's translated into English, so it comes from a different part of the world than most of us come from. It comes from a different culture than most of us come from. And it has a lot of mysterious elements to it. Like, for example, as the name implies, a, a giant castle, right, that, that walks around on little robot legs, right? The, the hero of the movie is this little girl who's under a magic spell, who turns her into into an older uh, woman. There is a fire demon in the movie, a fire demon who sounds awfully a lot like Billy Crystal, right? Which is kind of mysterious enough in itself. And then there is a living scarecrow, but not the kind of living scarecrow that we know from the Wizard of Oz. This is a living scarecrow who's still on the sticks, on the poles, arms like this, and he has a, a head that's made out of a vegetable. In fact, I want to play a little game a little quiz for those of you who were here. If you would like to win a fabulous prize, and by fabulous prize, I mean this. I mean a Campbell limited edition coffee mug. <laughs> and by limited edition, I mean there are hundreds of these. <laughs> if you would like the chance to win this, who can tell me, raise your hand, staff and family are not eligible, who can tell me what kind of vegetable was the scarecrow's head made out of? Yes, you. A turnip! Good job, hand for our winner. Can you pass that down for our winner? Good job. There you go. You might pass that down, please. Or, thank you so much. Yeah, it was a turnip, right? It was a turnip. If you would like your own chance to win a fabulous Campbell coffee mug next week, just come to the movie this Wednesday. It is Iron Giant. We're watching Iron Giant this Wednesday night. And uh, then come, there'll be an, another fantastic chance to win another fantastic prize a coffee mug next week, right? So come on back. Um, but it is this really mysterious film, right? In fact, it's one of those films where when people leave at the end, they often don't know what to make of it, right? I don't know what to make of it exactly. It's, it's one of those films that leaves you kind of scratching your head and, and different people can see different things in it, which is why I love it so much, right? It's why I love it so much. Because mystery is how we grow in life. Right? Mystery is how we grow in life. A lot of times we like to kind of eliminate mystery out of our lives, right? We like to know everything and have everything in neat little boxes, but the fact is we never grow that way. We grow by moving toward what is unknown, right? And not by just staying where we are where it feels safe. I ran across a quote this past week that 
captured this idea really well. This is a quote from Abraham Maslow, a famous psychologist from the mid 20th century in America. He says, in any given moment, we have two options, either to step forward into growth or to step back into safety, right? In any given moment, we have the chance either to, to step into the unknown, to grow a little bit more, or to stay where it's safe, right? And let that opportunity pass us by. By the way, does anybody know where I saw this quote where I took this picture? It's very nearby, yeah? Yes, Gary, good job. I don't have a coffee mug for you. I should though, I'm sorry. <laughs> Gary says he knows where the coffee mugs are at, so he's good. Um, yeah, this was at the entrance to our Small Wonders Preschool right here at, at Campbell. I love being at Campbell for a lot of reasons. One reason I love being at Campbell is that we greet our preschoolers and their families with a quote from Abraham Maslow. How awesome <laughs> is that? Um, because it's, it's true, right? It's true. If we want to grow in anything in life, we've got to do this, right? If, if you want to grow in, in, in a sport, if, in athletics, it means, it means you don't just stick with practicing the skills you're already good at. It means taking that leap of faith into the unknown and, and starting to try to learn things you don't know, yet the skills that you don't know. If you want to go get better at your job, it means not just kind of staying where it's safe, but kind of putting yourself out there, stepping into the unknown. And this is true in our relationship with with God and with Jesus, too. Because the truth is that, that Jesus was mysterious, right? Jesus is mysterious. Sometimes today, you know, we've talked about Jesus for the last 2,000 years in the Christian church. I, like, I think we, we like to think that, you know, we've got Jesus all figured out, right? We've got Jesus in a nice little box, right? And if Jesus is around today, we, we know where Jesus would drink coffee and where he'd go to the restaurants or what kind of music he would listen to and this and that and that and this, right? But, but the truth is, the Jesus of the Bible is very mysterious. He says very mysterious things. If you want to get a sense of the mystery of Jesus, by the way, read the Gospel of Mark. I love the Gospel of Mark because Nobody can figure out Jesus in the Gospel of Mark. Jesus of the Bible says strange things that do not make sense in any other place in life. Like, for example, the last shall be first, and the first shall be last, and the greatest of all shall be the servant of all. How does that make sense in any other place in life? Right? Who else is saying that today but Jesus? Right? Jesus says strange things like in the gospel of Acts, in the book of Acts, he's quoted as saying, it is better to give than to receive. Who else says that? And then in multiple places throughout the gospels, Jesus offers that very mysterious, very strange, very challenging teaching when he says, don't just love the people who love you back, love your enemies too. And that's tough stuff, right? That's mysterious, hard stuff. Who else says that today? Nobody but Jesus, right? And so, so following Jesus, trying to get to learn Jesus, growing in relationship with Jesus is, 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 a, is a good thing, of course, but it's also a little bit mysterious because it leads us into uncharted territory for anywhere else in life, thinking about things that no one else tells us it reminds me of a quote from C.S. Lewis. C.S. Lewis uh, was a, a Christian author from the United Kingdom in the early 20th century. He wrote, probably most famously, The Chronicles of Narnia. How many of you have read The Chronicles of Narnia, seen the movies? Yeah, yeah. So uh, in The Chronicles of Narnia, there's this lion, right? And the lion's name is? Aslan, you're so good. Good job. The lion's name is Aslan. And, and Aslan is this, you know, this big, ferocious lion, right? And... Um, and, and spoiler alert, Aslan represents Jesus, right? Sorry if I spoiled anything there. Um, and, and there's this great quote in the past, in the books, where, where they say of Aslan, Aslan is good. Aslan is always good. But that doesn't always mean he's, he's always necessarily safe. Right? He's always good. We can trust Aslan to be good. But that doesn't always mean he's necessarily safe. And, and that's true in its way of following Jesus too, isn't it? We, we can trust Jesus to be good, but sometimes saying yes to Jesus means that we have to leave behind what feels safe and comfortable and familiar, right? We have to walk toward what we don't know, toward the mystery, right? Mystery is how we grow. 
And, and I think uh, of all the places in the Bible that symbolize that journey, that call, our scripture reading today is, is one of the most powerful. Our scripture reading today, Joshua chapter 3, verses 7 through 13. Um, Joshua chapter 3, verses 7 through 13 tells us the story of an object, an artifact that is undoubtedly the most mysterious object, the most mysterious artifact in all of the Bible. And it's, it's this, right? It's the, the Ark of the Covenant, right? You remember Ark of the Covenant from Raiders of the Lost Ark? Yeah, yeah. I'm dating myself, but yeah, you get it, right? And if you've seen the movie, you know the Ark of the Covenant is a pretty mysterious thing, right? It's this, it's this unpredictable, powerful, mysterious object. According to tradition, the Ten Commandments were, were contained inside the Ark of the Covenant. And even more importantly, it was said that the presence of God was somehow contained in the Ark of the Covenant, that God was in this, this Ark, right? And that God would speak out of the top of this box, that in between the wings of the angels of the cherubim, the voice of God would speak. The Ark of the Covenant is a symbol of the pure mystery of God, right? The pure power of God. And yet this, this mysterious, powerful, unpredictable object is also the same thing that led the people into the future. The mystery led the people into the future. The Bible says that the Israelites, as they wandered through the wilderness, they would follow the Ark, right? As, as the priests would carry it through the wilderness, And then finally, in our scripture reading today, in the last step of their journey into the promised land, into the land that God had dreamed of for them, into the the identity that God had dreamed of for them, it's it's the ark that goes first, right? The priests step into the Jordan River, the Jordan River divides like Moses parting the Red Sea. And they follow this mystery into the land, into the future that God dreamed for them. They said yes to the unknown, right? They they stepped toward what they did not know. They didn't stay back where it was safe. You know, the mystery of the ark continues even after the Bible. Uh, It has a fascinating history because, you know, in the Bible, we find all these verses about how important the Ark of the Covenant is, how holy it is, how powerful it is, how mysterious it is, and then all of a sudden, it just disappears. I mean, it doesn't like, like literally disappear in the Bible, but, but the Bible just stops talking about it. It just stops talking about the Ark of the Covenant. It's the weirdest thing, right? And, and nobody knows what happened to it. Right? Nobody knows where it went. It's not quite true, not quite true. There, there is one group of people today who say that they very much know where the Ark of the Covenant went. There, there's an ancient church with several million members called the, the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, sometimes called the Tewahedo Church. And the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, it's, 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 it's ancient, it's very old, it has biblical roots, and, and it is one of the tenets of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church that, that the Ark of the Covenant was given by King Solomon to the queen of Sheba. Sheba uh, was an old name for a land that now includes Ethiopia. And the Ethiopian Orthodox Church believes that that 3,000 years ago, servants of the queen of Sheba went up and took the Ark of the Covenant from from Jerusalem, Israel, with King Solomon's blessing and brought it down to Aksum, Ethiopia, where it still resides today in this building. This is the temple, the the chapel of the tablet. And the Ethiopian Orthodox Church believes that inside of this little building is found the Ark of the Covenant. Now, is it actually in there? Eh. Who knows? One person knows. And he's not saying for sure. See, only one person is allowed inside of this building, ever. And they have the most awesome title ever. They're called the Guardian of the Ark, right? I want to see that movie, The Guardian of the Ark. The Guardian of the Ark. And and the Guardian of the Ark, once they're chosen, spends their whole life in this building. And then when they die, another Guardian of the Ark is chosen who goes into the building, right? That's the only person alive at any one time. 
who knows for sure whether the ark is in this building or not. A few years ago, a reporter for the Smithsonian Magazine caught the eye of the guardian of the ark through the fence, through the gate around the chapel with the tablet, and the reporter shouted out, hey, what's your name, right? That's a good question. And the, and the, the guardian of the ark said, I am the guardian of the ark. I have no other name, right? Which is awesome. Isn't that awesome? I love that, right? I love that that's, that's like not a movie. That's a real thing, right? I, I love that in the real world, this world, there is somebody like that, right? I love that because that is like this, this pure, undiluted example of somebody who has dedicated their life to keeping mystery alive, right? Somebody who has dedicated their whole life to mystery. That the power of that mystery is worth living a whole life for. And my friends, isn't that faith in miniature, right? Isn't that what faith is all about? For you and me too. Faith is all about dedicating our lives to a mystery. It's saying, you know, I'm never gonna fully understand this God that we talk about. I'm never fully gonna grasp. I'm never gonna have all my questions fully answered. I'm never gonna get this figured out. But I I trust that 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 God is good, right? That that mystery is good and I dedicate my life to it. Faith is saying, you know, I I may never figure out who this this Jesus Christ guy was for, for real, for sure. And I may have questions and I may have struggles, but I trust that Christ is good and I will dedicate my life to him, right? Faith is saying, I I may never understand how this this divine love, this this universal force created all that is and binds us all together, but I trust that somehow it's good, and I will dedicate my life to it. I mean, that's faith, right? That's, That's faith. And if we want examples of that kind of faith in action, we don't have to look any further than right here at Campbell United Methodist Church. I've only been here two weeks By the way, if you're a guest today, I've only been here two weeks. I've only been here two weeks, but I've just been blown away by the the saints of this church and their their willingness just to step out in faith to trust that mystery, that it's good. For example, we have all sorts of amazing young people going on mission today, right? Our own youth group at the 810 service, the group from Grace at this service, Now, there are a million different reasons why they didn't have to go on this mission trip, right? It'd probably be a lot easier just to stay home in the air conditioning, enjoy the summer a little bit more. I'm not trying to talk you out of it, you know, but... (laughs) And yet they say yes. Why? Because they trust this mystery, right? They trust this God that... We will never fully understand who said, nonetheless, it's better to to serve than be served, right? They trust that that is good. Over the last couple weeks, I've gotten to know a a, a wonderful family in the church who who gave this very generous donation to the church. They they gave a gift of $30,000 to the church over the last couple weeks for for the work of Jesus Christ at Campbell United Methodist. And why did they do that? Well, they they did it because they sold some property and they believe in tithing. And so they tithed the sale of that property and and gave this $30,000 for the work of God at at Campbell. And, And there were a million reasons why they didn't have to do that, right? But they did it. Why? Because they they trust this this Savior, this Christ, this mystery of God that says it's, it's better to give than to receive somehow. This past week, I got to know a saint of the church who's retired, and, and in her retirement, she has dedicated her life to, to, to sharing uh, God's love, the love of Jesus Christ with neighbors in need right here in Springfield. There are a million different reasons why she didn't have to do that, right? She could have just enjoyed her retirement, let somebody else done that, but... But she did it. Why? Because she trusts this Savior who says that when we we serve neighbors in need, when we're in ministry with neighbors who are suffering and hurting, we're we're really serving Christ. We're really with Christ. See this quote from from Maslow. It's not just like a, a nice little quote that we put there that Small Wonders puts there to greet the children and their families when they come in. This is faith in miniature, right? This is the call of faith in miniature, Because the truth is that in every single moment, God gives us a choice. 
in every single moment, God gives us a choice whether to, to, to step back and stay where it's safe and familiar and comfortable or to, to step out into the unknown because we trust that this God that we'll never fully get, we'll never fully understand is good and will lead us to a place that's good. And so the only thing left today is to ask the question, Where in your life right now is God inviting you to step out in faith? Where in your life right now is, are you at a place where it, it feels safe and comfortable and familiar and, and you have the sense that God is nudging you, urging you to, to, to step out, but, but it's really hard to leave what's safe and comfortable and familiar How is God calling you in your life right now to take that step? How is God calling me? How is God calling our church? There are a million reasons not to take that step. But there's one really good reason to, to take it, and that is that, that the God who calls us is good. And we can trust that God. We can trust that Savior, we can trust that divine love that leads us onward. And wherever it is, it's going to lead us to the place where we can lead the lives God made us to live, where we can be the people God made us to be, where we can enter into the land God dreams for us to be. It just takes stepping toward the unknown a little bit and trusting God for the rest. Let us pray. Oh God, we give you thanks for your call that leads us onward. Help us to place our trust above all in you. In the face of all we will never know, in the face of all we can never understand, help us to trust above and beyond all of that that you are good and you will not ever let us go. Help us to say yes to you, O oh God, for we pray in Christ's name. Amen.